Hello, this is Brian Casey of The Imaging Wire. We are here at RSNA 2025, and we are here with Dr. Ali Denaliwala of the University of Pennsylvania. We're gonna be talking about photon counting CT. He's an early user of uh, photon counting CT. Dr. Denaliwala, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So you are using a couple different uh, photon counting CT systems, and so we're gonna get some of your um, your impressions of those, but first, can you tell us a little bit about what photon counting CT actually is and maybe how it's a little different from the conventional CT that's been around for decades now? Yeah, so as most people who are in the space know, right, the main technology has been energy integrating, where a photon comes in, gets converted to light, and it's just a binary yes or no. With photon counting, we can now actually measure the energy and by knowing the energy of the photon, we can now back out specific material properties, which is a lot of jargon, but it says that we can get better imaging out of the photons. Hmm. What about radiation dose? Because I've heard that the radiation dose with photon counting CT can actually be pretty dramatically lower than the energy integrating CT. So, complicated question. I will say what, what photon counting does is it allows us to reduce noise and by decreasing the noise, you now have this ability to play with how much radiation dose you need to get an image. And so, you know, it's not necessarily saying that you're getting, you know, you're turning down radiation from one or the other, but because you have less noise, you just need fewer photons to get a good image. I guess you can do that choice between, like, you can either get a really great image at maybe a higher dose or maybe the same image at a much lower dose, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, I said that, that's the analogy I often use is, with photon counting, right, you can either do really high resolution with the same dose, or you can get the same resolution now with a much lower dose. Now, you've been using a couple different systems, uh, as we mentioned. What are some of your earliest impressions from using these systems? So, you know, we've been lucky. We have, uh, for the past year or so, been working with a prototype from Canon, their photon counting system, and we've had a lot of good experience with it, learning how to use it, what we can do with it, what images um, look like, and how we can make most use of it. And I would say, you know, the image quality has been really good. And once again, it comes back to the fact that because we can reduce that noise, you can get much higher image resolution. You know, we're seeing, you know, up towards of 10 times the resolution we would get uh, on our current scanners. Now, do you see any challenges with photon counting CT? Because it is kind of a different technology than what we've been used to. Yeah. So I think there's, you know, we saw this a little bit with dual energy CT. The first question that often happens is, what do we do with all these extra images? You know, we're getting this new material decomposition, we're getting this higher resolution, you know, scans that used to be, you know, 100 images are now 1,000 images. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, the biggest problem has been, how do we handle that? And I think to answer that, it really be um, important to focus on what is our question, right? And so is it to, you know, if you're doing a bone scan, I want high resolution, so maybe I only need high resolution on the bones. Or if it's for spectral, you know, maybe I only need to do spectral on the liver. So you can sort of answer your question without having to get all the information for everything. Got it. And if, if you could design the perfect photon counting CT system, what would you do? What, what, what kind of components would it have? I mean, honestly, there's, you know, there's sort of two answers to that. One, it's you want something that's reliable, right? So it should be something that, you know, works and works and works without having to do a lot of fiddling. You know, I don't have to worry about the room temperature. But that's sort of like the technical stuff. I think for me as a radiologist, it's something where actually, I don't even know it's a photon counting system. It just sort of disappears in the background, right? I just want my images, they should look clean. You know, I should be able to recover images that maybe were not that good, but because of the photon counting system, I can get better reconstructions. Um, you know, I don't want to be saying like, oh, I need this on a photon counting. It should just sort of, it should look great. And you know, in the back of my mind, I'm knowing, thank, because of photon counting, I can do this. Got it. Uh, so what, in the, for in the near future, like what do you see the promise of photon counting CT being? Yeah. You know, I think, once again, we've seen with dual energy what spectral imaging can do and the difference between image decomposition, material decomposition. But I think with photon counting, really the promise of that that we don't have right now is you know, K-edge imaging, which opens up, you know, it's a fancy way of saying a new way of getting contrast. And it opens up a whole bunch of new avenues for contrast that we don't see now, right? Right now we're stuck with sort of iodine and barium. 
You know, with KH Imaging, you open up to gadolinium, a whole bunch of other materials that we don't have access to, which gives us longer times. So, you're right, so instead of something clearing out of, in one minute, it now clears after five minutes. Mm -hmm. You can get, you know, if someone has a bad injection, you can still recover it because, you know, the contrast is so good. And that only is possible with photon counting. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, it'll be really exciting to see where this goes. Well, Dr. Ali Dan Danaliwala, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. All right, signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey.